whoever fought for women to get jobs. Why? Why did we do that? I am so tired. I want to just put my feet up. Like, I am... Oh my god. You know what, I gotta say it, gentlemen and gents, this broad gives all sorts of new meaning to being a pain in the neck. I mean, how many times have we told modern women that we're begging for... Ah, y you know what? Hang on. Just a second, gentlemen and gents. I don't know if it's just been me sitting in a space cruiser for the last 16 hours or what, but my neck has been driving me absolutely crazy. So just, just give me a second here. I'm just going to give it a twist. And, okay. Yep. There we go. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. That is so much better. Oh, baby. That's the stuff that dreams are made of right there. Hey, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember. Woman, you asked to work because you're a creature that's driven by your emotions. You don't believe me? Well, then just look at the inappropriate way you act when you're menstruating, then get back to me. Men have been warning you for the last century that going to work was a terrible idea. I mean, not just for your physical and your mental health, but also the mental well-being of the family, not to mention the economy. Thanks to you adding an additional income to the home, not to mention additional tax revenue to the state, local, and federal authorities, the cost of living in the Western world has skyrocketed to the point where everybody needs to to be working themselves into an early grave just to be able to afford to eat. You were too busy being high off the smell of your own self-satisfaction with all the attention you were given to even bother why you were demanding the ability to have an unfulfilling career in the first place. Well, it's too late now, sister. You asked for work, now you live with work. So be like your equal male counterparts and deal with it in silence. Yes, I'm certain that I read that somewhere once. Nowadays, it's not the boys that hurt me it's really the hybrid ones that used to be boys but then they turned into like soft little mushy men if you guys need scientific data about it i'll give you some scientific data out of all the men that i've met in new york so far two of them have hurt me and they've both been soft boys who are slightly emotionally available but like kind of on the fence treat you really well like take you out on proper dates but then they're in the end they're just like not there fully for like a relationship wow that's amazing hang on i'm kind of confused here you're saying that f boys aren't the problem even though those are the ones who clearly damaged what little was left in the middle of your skull there but it's the f boys who became soft boys i don't think you know what you're saying i can't really imagine a world where jackson tyronski vigilante truck driver would ever convert to being a simp Generally speaking, it's the other way around. You want some science? Well, I'll give you some science. Psychologically speaking, a simp can only take so much grief from a modern woman who either ignores him, uses him to buy her dinner, or dumps him into the friend zone when Jack's million is hiding out from the corrupt sheriff of Hazard County. But once a simp gains his self-respect and becomes a stronger man, he's not going to take you seriously because, well, look at you. You're about as endearing as a dead moth, but not nearly as interesting. Though I am pretty sure you are attracted to the same kind of dim light. These boy hybrid boys are dangerous because you know if they were to just portray themselves as a boy, you wouldn't give them the time of day. You would just rule them out. But because they're taking you out on these like proper dates, they're literally giving you emotional connection. They're kind of just like dragging you on this leash that like you could potentially be their girlfriend. That's when you kind of just room for them to absolutely destroy you. The other men that have just existed on the physical plane of dating in my life, they are chill. Like I'll follow them on Instagram. It's super chill. There's no hard feelings. Nobody cares, Sean. Nobody cares. Woman, the reason why you keep getting played by these guys who are taking you out on these dates is pretty simple. You see, the ninja master known as Tyrobi knows all sorts of ways to, well, how should I put it? penetrate your perimeter and once he's infiltrated your chamber of unwashed doom he now knows that he has low effort access to low effort fun times and all he has to do is string you along 
and all it costs him is a few bucks here and there for some dinner, maybe some drinks, and a movie every once in a while. But the men you find on Instagram do the same thing, but because you know they're way out of your league, you both agree to just ditch the formalities and go straight to the fun times because he's not going to turn down free bedroom fun, and you're so emotionally broken that physical intimacy is the only way you're capable of feeling anything. Ninja Masters work in mysterious ways. If you guys are confused about what kind of man I'm talking about, it's the ones that are on Hinge that say looking for short, open to long, or vice versa, looking for long, open to short. Like, both are dangerous. I don't know. Not on Hinge anymore. Nowadays, if a boy tells me he's soft, I'm like, well, bye. So the dangerous ones are the ones who say they're primarily looking for short-term relationships? Well, maybe I'm wrong on this one, but I always assume that if a man is looking for something short-term, he's not looking for a strong emotional bond, he's just looking to have some fun and then move on with his life. Isn't that the definition of a short-term relationship? Again, maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I am, but if you honestly think that these men are quote-unquote dangerous, then why do you even bother talking to them? You literally have dozens of men in your DMs who would be willing to talk to you at the push of a button. And granted, those men have no idea what they're in for, and I would feel sorry for them, but let's be real here. It's not like you're ever gonna talk to them. And speaking of buttons, I've been staring at this big red button for at least the last 10,000 light years, and I have no idea what it does. Wonder what would happen if I pushed it. Oh, okay. Nice. 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 Nice! Get ready with me to film some spicy content. I have been doing friends for about six months now. That's why I praise the Lord for prostitutes. And I actually think I wear more makeup now than I did when I was working my 9 to 5. But let me tell you my journey so far while being on this platform. So I was working full time when I started. I was doing OF alongside my job for about four months. And it took that company three months to find out about it. Seeing as they are quite a big government company, it had to like go to HR and things like that. But they let me continue to do it because my role was not face to face. It was over the phone. And I didn't use my real name. I ended up leaving that job around a month or two later because I wanted more time freedom. Time freedom is just something that I value so much and I didn't want to spend a majority of my time sitting down at a desk at a 9 to 5 so I left that job. Is that shit? <sighs> it's a shit smell. Is that you? It smells like popo. Wait, hang on a second. You had a government job in an office with a staff that had full knowledge of your only freaks account and they didn't fire you because you didn't use your real name? I find that incredibly hard to believe because if your HR department knew, odds are the entire office knew. Offices are some of the most soul-crushing places to work, and these guys are so starved for anything interesting that knowledge of one of their co-workers who makes jalapeno content on the side is not something that's going to remain a secret for very long. HR is never on your side when it comes to this kind of stuff. And on top of that, you mean to tell me your entire staff was totally cool with this and didn't rightfully judge you for what you've done to yourself? Yeah, I'm calling horse malarkey on that one. Either that office was so desperate for help that they were willing to look the other way as you shame your entire family and demean the name of the office where you worked, or you're doing a little bit of truth bending. And considering your <clears throat> profession, I'm inclined to believe the latter. Since then, I have gone overseas for a holiday and adopted two new kittens. <laughs> <laughs> and I've started posting on my YouTube channel again. I was probably researching for about three or four months before I did actually start, just so that I could fully understand all the consequences and the pros and cons. I'll usually pick one day for the week that will be like my content day, and I'll take all of my content on that day and send it out and schedule it for throughout the week. Also, if you can hear something in the background, it's my kitten who is playing with her toy. The other one's sleeping. Now that I've been spending a lot of time at home, I've been trying to do like little habits and stuff just to keep me from being lazy. For example, getting changed out of my pajamas in the morning, making my bed, having like an allocated workspace where I can just sit down and do my editing and scheduling and replying to messages. I've also been transforming this entire lounge and making it some place that I'm super comfortable in and getting new furniture and making sure that it's a vibe so that I don't get bored in this space because I spent a lot of time in here. What we got here is a little game of show and tell. You don't want to show me nothing, but you're telling me everything. 
Wait a second. Let's rewind that for a moment. I ended up leaving that job around a month or two later because I wanted more time freedom. Time freedom is just something that I value so much and I didn't want to spend a majority of my time sitting down at a desk at a 9 to 5. So you decided to start a career where you sell your body online to complete strangers, a career that you'll be able to do for maybe five years, seven tops, because you wanted more time to yourself and you were sick of being stuck behind a desk with a 9 to 5 okay but now you have more of this time freedom and you spend it behind a desk replying to emails and posting content so yeah that's a totally rational and mature trade-off when it comes to the rest of your life and it sounds to me like you're already bored out of your skull sister it looks like you don't get out much and you spend a lot of your free time just trying to keep yourself from going stir crazy and it sounds to me like you're failing at it as well now i get it nobody likes a boring nine to five but i'd rather be stuck behind a desk at a government office than sat sacrificing all of my privacy in exchange for a few years worth of rent money and a couple of cats. I'm surprised that I haven't actually got bored yet of staying home and doing the same thing most weeks. Liar! 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 But eventually when I do, I think I might get a part-time job or start like a new hobby or start a some business or something to keep me busy because obviously there is a lot of free time with this line of work even though lots of people wouldn't consider this as work even though i'm still trading time for money and i still pay my taxes even though it's not physical work that does not mean that it isn't work although it does annoy me when some influencers say that they have to do work and it's just to like post a haul or something and i'm like no that's not work so i get it anyway this is the finished makeup look now I'm going to go get changed into some lingerie and do a little wee photo shoot. That's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed and have a good rest of your day. You're boring! You're fucking dull! You have nothing to say! You are a one hived mind twat waffle! Oh man, you can just see the bitter resentment oozing out of this broad's pores. She cannot appreciate the fact that society won't accept what she does as a legitimate job. Society can't. You're not just selling spicy pics through only freaks, woman. You've sold your shame, your soul, and your privacy. Yes, you trade time for money and you're able to keep the tax man at bay, for now. But society will never accept what you do as legitimate. That's just not how it works, lady. Now, you think that when you get bored, you'll just be able to go out and find a part-time job just so you can have something to do. And I can already tell you that is never going to be a possibility. Hiring a woman such as yourself is just a one-way ticket for any business straight to closure. And no business is going to risk that just to alleviate your boredom. But there's no need to worry, sweetheart. I'm sure with all the money you're making, you'll be able to afford all of the cats that you'll ever need. Oh! And that is going to do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button, ring the notification bell, share this video, maybe go on down to the comments section, leave a few words on today's subject of pencil sharpeners. Thank you for sticking with me as I figure out how to move and groove around this crazy world known as YouTube. Thank you so much for checking out the new video, and until next time, peace out, homies.